Okay, well, good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Gordon Anthony. I am Professor of Public Law at Queen's University in Belfast, and I'm also the Director of the Academy of European Public Law uh, here in uh, Greece. Uh, this year, I've had the pleasure of teaching a, a course on the law of the public interest with my uh, colleague and friend, Spiridon Vlakopoulos, who is a professor at the National and Capodistrian University uh, in Athens. We, we taught it uh, across three weeks and divided the classes uh, among us. Uh, the course was called The Law of the Public Interest, um, and essentially all I want to do is say, in a nutshell, what the course uh, was about and how the course was structured. Um, it's, it's fairly typical of courses that are taught at the Academy um, and hopefully it'll encourage people to uh, come along in the future and, and study with us. The course itself, uh, its fundamental objective was to consider uh, what the term the public interest means and how it's used in a range of different uh, legal systems. Uh, the Greek legal system, the UK legal system, EU law and the European Convention. Uh, on human rights. There were also links made to other um, international treaties we went along and in some instances discussion about global law which is a, a, an area of law of growing importance uh, and one that has been studied uh, at the academy before in previous years. Uh, within that as a, as a primary aim uh, we wanted to explore how the term the public interest is used to make the law work. Um, many People already know that the public interest is a vague term, it, it means different things at different times. But what we wanted to do was study the public interest uh, and see how the courts in particular use the term the public interest uh, to make the law work, uh, taking different areas as, as an example. One of the things that's emphasised in the course is of course that the term the public interest is not always used in ways that are consistent and complementary and that's one feature of the fact that it's used uh, to drive the legal system and allow the legal system uh, to work. In doing that, we also uh, hope to, if, if you like, dig a little bit deeper into the term the public interest and examine some of its underlying concepts, related themes. Uh, an obvious one would be the principle of democracy. Uh, in the European system, there is often a link between the idea of the public interest and democracy, whether in terms of democratic process uh, or democracy as an underlying value in itself. So we've looked at aspects of that. Um, related to that have been ideas of participation, participatory democracy, and how that can bring forward uh, an idea of the public interest that is an amalgam of, of different interests in society. Uh, and of course, as lawyers, we've also looked very closely at the link between the public interest and legality, um, and touched upon themes such as, as transparency as well. Just a couple of words about the, the classes. The first week was taught by Professor Vlacopoulos, uh, taught in very beautiful premises in the centre of Athens. Uh, Professor Vlacopoulos uh, focused primarily, not exclusively, but primarily upon Greek law um, and looked, for instance, at a case concerning the public interest and the introduction of austerity measures in Greece. In doing that, he looked at a decision, an admissibility decision of the European Court of Human Rights and and that gives one example of how the term public interest intersects in terms of being used by European law and in terms of being used uh, by Greek law. Uh, Professor Vaclopoulos also used a moot uh, courtroom exercise as part of his teaching method to ensure that there was uh, full student participation and an opportunity uh, to look at things uh, from a number of perspectives, litigants, judges, etc. Uh, my part of the course focused then on UK law and in particular the intersection that UK law has with EU law and with the law of the European Convention on Human Rights. Of course, at the moment, uh, we've just had the Brexit vote in, in the UK, so one of the very first things we did was discuss amongst ourselves uh, what Brexit means in terms of public interest, whose public interest is it in, whose public interest is best served by it, and that, of course, brought us towards discussions of ideas of sovereignty, national interest, state interest, are those the same thing as public interest in a globalising and Europeanising uh, society. Uh, after that I took a number of areas of UK law where we, we see European law and the common law and statute law in the UK weave together uh, and the public interest be used in a number of, of ways, sometimes competing ways, sometimes complementary ways. Uh, we focused 
uh, first of all, on the, the law of judicial review, the judicial review procedure, uh, the grounds for judicial review, how our courts in the United Kingdom use European norms to develop uh, principles of law and what they say about public interest. Um, and towards the end of the course, we strayed over towards uh, tort law to consider ideas of public authority liability and negligence. When the courts would say it's not in the public interest for individuals to be able to sue public bodies. And we also looked at the very dynamic areas of the law of defamation and the law on privacy, as those are areas where freedom of expression uh, is used as one very obvious area in which the public interest has an important role to say, not just in the right to freedom of expression, but also uh, the uh, power of the state to limit freedom of expression.